It happens so much that we're just all used to it by now. People, mostly online, because in real life, few people care about this enough to bother us. People claiming that our animal-based or entirely carnivore diets are unsustainable. Not only on a personal level, but on an environmental level. And most people, frankly, don't typically care who, you know, believe this nonsense. They don't typically care when we talk about the role in the biosphere that cattle play in regenerating land after horrific monoculture practices destroy topsoil. People just repeat the mantras that the powers that shouldn't be have been feeding into their heads because they've been feeding it into their heads for a long, long time. And it's gotten to the point where a number of us don't bother arguing with individual people about this stuff anymore. It's sort of like arguing with a wall. The problem is, of course, that they won't leave us alone at all, that we're going to have to verbally defend our position from people with real power in the court of public opinion. And the deck is, in that regard, stacked heavily against us. We know this. The fact is that most people don't care much about their health in any meaningful way, because if they did, the drive throughs would be empty. The chip aisle small, the snack aisle small, and processed food options in general would be very few in number, and they'd probably be much higher quality than they are. But that is not the reality we live in for a variety of reasons, and the powers that shouldn't be control the narrative about what is healthy and what isn't. They get to define what the science says. So that the bulk of people who do care about their health think meat should be limited in some way or another as a consequence of this. But there are signs of hope in all of this, including the growing mainstream acceptance of the ketogenic diet, even if the reasons for that aren't the best, and carnivore getting the kind of attention keto was about 10 years ago or so. There are signs that things are shifting in our favor, but not all is good on that front. Our adversaries in this battle for the proper human diet being available to everybody who wants it are pushing using the political power they have to eliminate meat. They're arguing in favor of radical reductions in meat consumption that would essentially be imposed from the top down and it would have catastrophic impacts on human well-being. And given that those of us who advocate for the proper human diet have no institutional power to do anything about this, we have to speak out about this using facts and science as our tools while we still can do at least that much. I'm going to give you here an example, unfortunately, that is kind of black pilling. It's the latest move by the misanthropes who hate meat. Headline from vegnews.com. Report. Reducing meat consumption by 80% means Canada could achieve net zero. A report by New World Animal Protection says that if Canadians reduce their meat consumption by 80%, Canada would meet its 2050 target of net zero. Look, we know that the real environmental cost of animal agriculture is extraordinarily low, responsible for at most of, of about 5% of, of pollution output in the U.S. and similar in Canada. Yet the enemies of all human beings everywhere will hear nothing about facts and reality. They have one mission, and that is, unfortunately, to push their message, to push their program even if it means it comes at the cost of your health. And they push this lie without ever addressing a question that is obvious to any of us who know anything about American history. And it's this. Before the mid-19th century and westward expansion, the Great Plains of the United States were home to at least 30 million buffalo, which is roughly 10 times the number of cows that exist in the United States today, if the numbers I saw on that a few months ago are even remotely accurate. And the question here is this, and again, they won't answer this. Why weren't they having the problems they say we're having now at that time? I mean, there were more cattle at that time. They never answer that question because what they're advocating for isn't based on science. It's based on a desire for control. The article here quotes from a report by the Canadian government, who have, of course, never done anything to, you know, show controlling tendencies on anything, right? It's, from, it's a Canadian report on the agriculture sector and how it's the problem. Remember, that is, they push for eliminating nitrogen, which would collapse the food supply for everyone everywhere if they did it and if America followed suit. From the article, quote, As the agriculture sector is faced with the challenge of decarbonization, there is increasing availability of meat and dairy alternative products on the market. Yum, yum, folks. Absolutely delicious. Anyway, 
as well as increasing awareness of the health and environmental benefits of shifting consumption away from animal to plant-based foods, the report says. Sorry, I can't read that without laughing. Shifting agriculture production from animal to plant-based foods can impact emissions in this sector. Due to the emissions intensive nature of animal agriculture, end quote. And if you believe that, folks, I got some wonderful beachfront property here in central Oklahoma to sell you. It'd be great. But that's their premise. Remember, their premise is that there are health benefits to a plant-based diet. For the vast majority of people, that is nonsense. The fact that 85% of vegans leave their diet due to their compl complications on that diet is evidence enough of that, that, that veganism is not the proper human diet. And I think most vegans would actually even admit that because they do it for what they call, consider moral reasons. But here's the kicker. The Canadian government report admits that they're fudging the numbers to make it look like animal agriculture is to blame for this problem they insist that we have. They come out and say it if you actually know how to read. From the article, quote, the report's research is the first of its kind in quantifying the true emissions from Canada's animal agriculture sector. While Canada's emissions reporting accounts for emissions from feed production, fertilizer production, and fertilizer use across various sectors, the report notes that these emissions should be attributed to animal agriculture to understand the true impact of this sector, end quote. So I'm a trained social scientist. I have a PhD in public policy, and my focus was on the policy surrounding sustainable development. I've read all the parent literature for all this stuff that they're pushing. The peer-reviewed research on these things is so bad that it's obvious that the researcher posits the outcome that they want to have before they even begin their research, before they collect their data. And then regardless of what the data says, they say the research proves their hypothesis. I saw this in published peer review articles numerous times. The same thing is here in this study, which is just on its face, utter nonsense. But here's what they want to do to you. Their proposal is a complete disaster for your health. And I want you to remember something here, that this would require a level of intimate control over your life that they'd have to impose to accomplish this. It's going to be a deal breaker for the vast majority of people out there. From a the article again, quote, the report's results indicate that shifting demand from animal to plant-based food can decrease the emissions impact of the agri agriculture sector. For example, agriculture emissions are 13% lower in 2030 and 29% lower in 2050 in the report's low animal consumption scenario relative to the high animal consumption scenario. Agriculture emissions are lower in low animal consumption scenarios due to the high emissions intensity of animal agriculture and is primarily driven by a reduction in beef cattle production. For the average Canadian, this means if they consume seven dinners in a week, all of which currently contain meat and or dairy, one meal would contain meat and or dairy in 2050 in the low scenario. End quote. There's a lot of problems with that statement there. I'll just going to focus on the obvious glaring omission. And that is that there's little or no mention of regenerative agriculture, which is friendly to the environment and carbon neutral. And why don't they mention that? Because it's not about the environment. This is about restarting human civilization over again by the end of the decade. That's what this is about. Canada is a partner government in that, and so is the American one. I think my favorite part of this nonsensical article, though, is their claim that reducing animal agriculture by 80% would reduce the economic cost of doing all the things they say Canada has to do to meet its goals by a whopping 11%. What a trade-off. <laughs> Just no mention of all the deleterious costs on human health that would come as a consequence of this boneheaded policy. Because of course those costs would be seen as positive economic drivers. Remember, you getting a prescription of any kind from the doctor, getting it filled at the pharmacy is still economic activity. Even if you're not paying the bill, even if it's most of it being covered by the Canadian government, as in this case. The manufacturers of that product still get paid for it, so it's a huge win for them. That's still economic activity. Never underestimate, by the way, the power of greed and power combined over anything remotely resembling moral decision-making. There's no morality in this proposal. Just the idea that human beings can be managed like any other problem, because they see people as a problem. Once the misanthropic nature of this is understood, we can really begin to talk seriously about how to beat them. And we have to talk about that, folks. 
we can't let this be something that we lose. I'm curious what you think about all this. So do you believe that they're going to be successful in this? Do you believe there's anything we can do? Let me know in the comments what you think about all this. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Share this on social media if you can. It really helps as well. I'm Anthony Stein, and thanks for watching today.